Hey, good day, everybody. This is Sports for Night News. I'm Joe Boric, and this is going to be a reaction to an emotionally splitting Philadelphia Phillies series split against those St. Louis Cardinals. You can't tell because I have to have another light on for lighting, but that's in red. That's one of those multicolored lights in the red color for our Phillies, unfortunately. Um, we're very disappointed in them by the fourth game, which we'll get to soon. But like I said, this series was very emotionally back and forth. The first game, Phillies again could not score, um, obviously, if their life depended on it. But you got a great, they couldn't even get anybody on base against Adam Wayne, right? He was just dealing. This was the best pitching performance of the season thus far, no matter who was in it. And they were the first pitchers of the season to go eight innings, both eight innings, one run ball for Wheeler, nine strikeouts. And then when you go over to Wayno, Adam Wainwright, eight strikeouts in nine innings. He was able to go the full nine innings, of course, and just dealt where the only reason the Phillies, of course, were able to win this game is because Reese was able to homer twice and came up clutch again at the beginning of the series for the Phillies and my fantasy team, which is nice. Hasn't been as squeaky clean since, but Reese Hoskins was clearly along with Zach Wheeler. Zach Wheeler would say, I would definitely say, would be the first star of Game 1 with Reese Hoskins, obviously, as number 2, since he was the only reason, along with Wheeler, the team was able to win, because they couldn't get anybody going, they couldn't get anything going against Wainwright, unless if your name was Reese Hoskins, he was able to hit a couple hangers there. So that's Game 1, that was all good, Wheeler pitched and dealt, and really did very well in that game, unfortunately for him, was not able to get the win, uh, which I believe um, ended up going... Oh, no, Wheeler was able to get the win in that game. I, I'm I'm sorry. And then Hector Neris did get the save. So, good for Wheeler to now bring his record to 2-2. Two and two, And Reese Hoskins get the two home runs in Game 1. In Game 2, not so good, of course, as it was Carlos Martinez Part 2 against Zach Eflin, where... Zach Eflin in this game did go six and two thirds, but gave up five runs. But a couple of those were because of the inherited um, runners that were then scored. When uh, let's see here, I'm trying to remember who was pitching. Sam Coonrod was pitching in that instant when Goldie was able to double um over Herrera to score Edmund and uh, and Carlson in that game. So that's when uh, that added to Eflin's line. Coonrod was not able to stop the inherited runners. Otherwise, he would have just gave up three. It would have actually been a pretty good performance. But Coonrod was not able to stop his inherited runners. He, he's he been good this season, but a little bit off. Relievers do that. I'm not worried, but a little bit off these most recent outings. And you would hope he's able to bounce back soon. Uh, that's for Sam Coonrod. But this game, the Phillies did just not look good overall. This was a bad game for them. They actually made Carlos Martinez, who is still trying to figure himself out, battling back from past injuries and now trying to become a starter again, look a Amazing to get his first win. He's now one and four. He pitched seven and a third, only given up two walks, four strikeouts, and one earned run. Who's been really off? He still only brought his ERA down to four seven six. So that shows how off he's been after that game. So that's a game the Phillies should have been able to win, as far as I'm concerned, because you should have been able to pounce on Martinez more, and they were just making him look like the Carlos Martinez when he first came up into the majors prior to his injuries. That was one of these hyped-up prospects, just like Matt Moore was back in the day. They were making him look like the old Carlos Martinez that was hyped up when he first came up, and you just cannot do that. That was inexcusable. They still couldn't get anybody on base. They only went 0 for 4 with runners in scoring position and left 3 on base because nobody could get on base. So for back-to-back -back games, the Phillies couldn't get anybody on base. Only one in the first game because Wheeler pitched a masterpiece and Hoskins was able to hit two home runs. So obviously that's the death-defining problem. You can't get anybody on base in this series. Then in the third game, things ended up, of course, going the Phillies' way, which is actually surprising since normally games Vince Velasquez pitches in. You don't always think going in confident that stuff are going to go the Phillies' way. He pitched adequate four and a third innings, three earned runs. I don't think you expect much more from Vinny. You don't really expect. He rarely gets to the fifth inning if he. So, I mean, that's not really. I don't, I don't love that he doesn't do that, but at least he kept us in the game. Kinster came in and pitched a clutch one and a third inning, giving up nothing. Um, and then Brogdon came in, pitched well in a two thirds of an inning. Alvarado pitched well in a third of an inning. And then Kunrock came in and actually pitched well in this game, along with Nearest to get the save where the runs in this game were supplied by Andrew Knapp, was able to single, 
And, of course, Brad Miller hit a big home run, a two-run home run in this game. Coming up big there, a bomb to right field. And then Kutch was able to single, who has looked better in this series, which is hopefully a plus moving forward. And then DD before having to come out of this game for getting hit by a pitch, was able to hit that sack fly to score Alec Boehm. So in this game, the Phillies were able to push across some runs. Obviously, they were able to get five to make it five to three. They were still three for 11 with runners in scoring position, though, and left seven on base. So that's still a death-defining problem. They just got a nice two-run home run by Brad Miller to get a couple in there at a time. So that's still a big issue for the Phillies. you got to stop leaving so many people on base and runners in scoring position. But in this game, it, of course, did not harm them as they were actually able to get the W and win this game. And then in the last game of the series, this was just a very frustrating game as we wrap up this video. This was just a bad game that they were not able to win because Matt Joyce, for some reason, is running when you have JT Real Muto coming up in next inning when there's a fly ball to Carlson who has an not an accurate arm, a strong arm, not always the most accurate arm, Dylan Carson, but strong arm that got it there, Arenado is one of the best fielders, he makes the tag, that's just a dumbfoundingly moronic, stupid play, you don't want to make the last out at third base, that's not a smart thing to do whatsoever, and then, of course, you walk the batter in the bottom of the 10th, and then proceed to bring the infield in, like, huh, like, why, like, if you walk the batter and you have a catcher at the plate that's not to the speed of Real Muto, or even Knapp, who's a pretty quick scatty catcher of himself, you don't need to bring the infield in. You should have been at double play death. Of course, it didn't end up mattering um, at that point since uh, David Hale threw a wild pitch that ended up bringing in the winning run, which is so frustrating. Um, after, of course, Aaron Nola only got subbed out because they needed a pinch hitter, Aaron Nola absolutely dealt today through six innings. He gave up three runs, but that's because he had one mistake pitch to Matt Carpenter. That Roman Quinn almost robbed the home run and caught the ball, but then ended up turning his glove, like Ricky Bo said, the opposite way um, over the wall and almost ended up turning it into um, the bullpen rather than turning it away from the bullpen like you would see guys rob home runs over the fence, whether it's going into the bullpen or not. So that's something that I think I'm with Ricky Bo. Bryce probably could have caught that just by size alone and then getting back there where he has the advantage over Quinn. Quinn put in a good effort, but unfortunately turned his glove the wrong way and ended up costing him going over the fence. And um, that ended up being a big play in the game, as I think Noel would have locked it down and got us a win, obviously, if that homer was robbed earlier on. I'm not going to harp on that since it was an attempt to rob a homer, but I do think Bryce Harper, pun intended, would have been able to potentially catch that ball. But this was just a dumbfoundingly frustrating loss. Joyce should never have tied up on that play. And if you walk somebody to set up a double play, go for the damn double play. Don't bring the infield in. It didn't end up mattering because David Hale, of course, threw a wild pitch. And that's just the way it is. I was going to say going into the series, as I said in the series preview, I would have been happy with the split, but with this split, I'm not too happy because it's such a frustrating way to split. The Phillies could have found a way to win. You shouldn't have made Carlos Martinez look like the Martinez, one of the top prospects in baseball when he's coming up, when he's still trying to figure out how to come back. You gave him his first win, still has a 4 7 6 ERA after that. You shouldn't have done that, and you should have been able to play better today and actually have fundamentals. Ruben Amar Jr. tweeted about this was a deserved loss. They had bad fundamentals. Uh, you should have been able to have fundamentals and win this game. This has been a reaction to the Phillies versus Cardinals, a series split, a very emotionally splitting series split. Um, it's a very frustrating series split, but at least the Phillies got the series split on the road and did not lose the series. Everybody have a great, safe, and pleasant day. And for my NFL fans, such as myself as well, enjoy the NFL draft tonight. Peace out, everybody. Hopefully the Phillies can come home and win a series.